I'll bring the wine, you bring the glasses. What a great time we'll have while the last us. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cat. Hi, I'm Joanne and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. Today on the show we will be tasting three Sauvignon Blancs from different regions of the world and pairing them with some delicious appetizers. My guest on the show today will be Pete Gardner. You may know Pete from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and the upcoming Perfect Commando that will be released in February in Norway and coming soon to the United States. So without any further ado, let's welcome Pete Gardner. Wow, I'm so excited about the show. I'm excited that you're here. I want to talk a little bit more about the Crazy Ex-Girlfriend stuff. You did Crazy Ex-Girlfriend the show, but you also did Crazy Ex-Girlfriend the tour. That's so true. So please tell me a little bit about the tour. Uh, the tour was fantastic. We went to Portland and Chicago, and that I was really great to go about. back to Chicago. We went to Washington, Philly, to New York. We did Radio City Music Hall, which was amazing. It's the biggest theater in the, not in the United States, in the world. I had to follow Lin Manuel Miranda. Oh, piece of who, cake. Right? <laughs> right? That place, 6,000 people went bananas when he was there. It was crazy. Even though I had been on a TV show, for four years, my mom <laughs> thought I had made it when you got to because radio I did City. radio sets. So another exciting. nice thing was Rachel uh, hooked up my two sons because uh, I did my sperm is healthy. Um, you know, from Which the show a was a song from the show, <laughs> and my sons played the two sperm <gasps> dancing behind oh, me, and so awesome. they got to be on oh, stage oh. at Radio City. But that was so sweet of Rachel. And then the other thing that was amazing is I had told Rachel that. My wife and I were like, after we're done the show, you know, maybe it'd be fun to go do something else rather than just do the same old thing here in oh, Los Angeles. Right. So we wanted to move to London. And Rachel's like, oh, I'm doing a show in London. Do you want to come? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, this would be so much fun. And I was like, hey, Scott, <laughs> ask Rachel if you can go too. <laughs> That's, how and many so Scott from, Michael Foster, How many people from the show went to the uh, London? Cat Burns, Scott, and myself. In the tour, weren't you guys even, not everybody could make it to every... Show, yeah, because people would go to what they could. As well. I was in all of them because <laughs> I was like, this is never going to happen to me again. Oh. I definitely, and that's what I just you're, kept telling I them. I feel like you're, uh, I don't want to say an opportunist because that sounds in a greedy way, but the kind of person who sees an opportunity yes. and doesn't miss it. I'm going to talk about the wine real quick so we can talk and drink at the sure, same time. Sure, sure. So we're going to start off with the Hush Sauvignon Blanc from Mendocino, which is Alexander Valley in Mendocino, California. Okay, it's just so America out there knows. I don't know a thing about wine. <gasps> perfect. No, I that's really perfect. don't know a darn thing. But I know I like Sauvignon Blanc. Which is exactly what he said, which is why the whole show is Sauvignon Blanc. So we're going to compare and contrast. I like my Savvy B. All right. So uh, I'm that's just going to... what the gonna... kids are saying. They are saying that. You must have the TikTok. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm pouring way too big of pours, but it's this okay. This is going to be a fun show. So uh, the cool thing, you said you don't know anything about wine. Mm -hmm. I luckily don't know anything about wine as well, which is why I'm doing the show. Bingo. And they say, yeah. they, they, there's this like ethereal they that talk to me about wine. Uh, you look at the color and I can't quite figure out what the color means other than it tells you the age of the wine and stuff if you know about wine. Hmm. So it's like a light yellow. That's all I know. What we're going to do is smell it. They say to look for uh, fruits and spices. So tell mm. me if you smell any fruits and spices. And they go in with the nose. They're like, mm. yeah. <laughs> can you take a sip through your nose? Um, can? I would say mm. the, the answer is yes. I'm smelling a uh, apple. Oh, that's good. Apple See, and I'm so bad at the smelling part. Like I don't tend to smell foods all the time. Like, do you smell um, like plastic, <laughs> like a pool raft, <laughs> and maybe like? Oh, that's what it is. Mmm. And maybe like, especially mm. with white wines, like yes, a yes. little bit uh, of cat food. Yes. And and it's like a <laughs> like, like a so plastic healthy. giraffe. Uh, yeah, like a yeah. Pla oh, specifically. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Why didn't you eat cat food? No, I smelled it. I'm not eating She's it yet. Eating I haven't cat tasted food. No. I've eaten dog food. I've eaten dog biscuits. Because you were hungry? No, because I wanted to see what they tasted like. And, and they weren't that bad. They're very salty, though. I feel like animal food Are is they? very salty. Well, I felt like they were just like kind of dry and no. tasted like cardboard. But you know no. what? They really smell good because I remember I got a job one time where I was uh, auditioning to be like the Benefold guy with mm -hmm. his dog or whatever. And I had just recently gotten a dog, a puppy. And so I had the treats in my pocket. And I crushed them up and I put them oh, on my face. And the dog, and the was, dog was looking and they were like, you know, Pete, we went with you because the That's... dog just seemed to love you. And I was like, yep. All right, no, so now we're going to taste it. So cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. chin. Oh, yeah, plastic. I can, the plastic is now, really see, now blooming. Now I taste the apple. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, let's do that again. Okay. This is delicious. It's really nice. That's why I love it. Yeah. I love it because it's it's light, it's kind of fruity, it it's happy, and when you sit down like you're having some seafood or whatever you're having and you're having this, it's just and it, delicious. It doesn't have any of that. You know how sometimes it's like got that... Nope. Yeah, it doesn't have doesn't that. It doesn't have that because that's what that. keeps me away from wine is I don't like that yeah. afterwards and a lot of red wine has that. I've actually decided, but of the whites... This is the one that I like the best. This is it's delicious. Really delicious. Now, do you already have a preference between California and New Zealand and other places, or do you even well, have you paid attention? So I had my own little. I've never had a celebrity moment, but this was my celebrity moment. And this is in in Cork, in Ireland. We went to this restaurant. A friend of mine, uh, Mike Langman, and myself. One of the managers or somebody like that recognized me from the show, and everything changed. I've never had this experience in my life, and they're like. Oh, you don't need to be here. Come here, oh. right this way. And then they showed me a table, and I was like, oh, this is great. And they're like, no, 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 upstairs. Oh. And then we went upstairs into this place, and they were like, sit down. And then we were like, this is great. And then they were like, what would you like? And I was like, Sauvignon Blanc. And they were like, would you like the California? Or would you like the New Zealand? <laughs> and I was like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> and she was like, let me bring you both. I was like, uh, okay. And then she was like, what do you think? And it was the greatest experience. I, oh. I, and you know what? It, that never happens. Can I just go on and on like this? You, you, can, you know what? I'm going to make you eat something while we go on and on. We're going to pair and then we're going to talk as well. What is said to pair with this is shrimp scampi. Help yourself. Have a little bite. And then we'll see how that tastes. Mmm. Gamey. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Here's to you. Mm. Or see, I think it made that little come out a little bit in the wine. Yeah? Do you like it better with the shrimp or without the shrimp? <laughs> without the shrimp. That's interesting. Yeah, it did, it did it change it. It changed the, the flavor a little bit, but not in a bad way. It made it maybe like a little lemony or something. Mm -hmm. Like it kind of gave it more of a Maybe tartness. though, the, is there a little bit of lemon on the shrimp? Maybe that's it. Because hmm. st I'm still tasting it now when I go back to... Well, you're still, uh, I think, smelling the plastic from the seahorse. <laughs> well, the plastic seahorse sea that, that goes in your, yeah, seahorse giraffe. So we are going to move on to the next wine. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, currently... Oh. Look at this. Woo! <laughs> Opa! <laughs> and I then, told you I'd throw things, didn't I? No, that was it. He did. I did warn you. I said there would probably be... Straight up warning. But that is literally the funnest opening we've had on the now, show. Now, that's a thing now on the... Thank on you very the much. Instagrams and things like that. People like kicking off a top oh, or something like that. Have you ever seen the sabering off? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, it scares the crap out of me. Why? That's because so cool. I, because I'm a klutz. I am inherently a klutz. And so this is not going to end well. I hit a man in the head with the first time I ever popped the champagne in a restaurant. Really? I went, Phew, bunk, and hit the guy who was like the patriarch of the family. He's like 80 years old. He I'm had like, it coming. That's probably a, probably a dick. Yeah. The one right. time on uh, on New Year's Eve, somebody did that. They popped it off. It hit the ceiling, and then everybody's like, "Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? It was in someone's glass, <laughs> and it was a it was a, a champagne flute, and it, and goes, it must have perfectly and it didn't even hit dropped into the, the thing. Yeah, it didn't even hit because it went right in, and nobody knew where it was, and everybody's like, "That is the craziest thing. It just disappeared." Magical. But I would great? save that. I would save that like it's a lucky. Yeah, a lucky, I have. Lucky I make top. up my own weird things that are like I don't have. Um, what is that called? Superstitions. Yeah. But I have my own weird things that are lucky, like better known as superstitions. Well, okay, but they're not. But they're yeah, I guess. But they're not based on anybody else's stuff. Yeah, those are the bad ones. Here's anyway. one that happened. So I was working in this retail place, and somebody handed me a 20, and it looked weird. And this was before all the money looked different. Remember when our money used to all look exactly oh, sure. the same? Back in the day. Back in the day. Kids, you don't even understand. Oh, you, okay, so money is this phones. paper currency. Yeah. that Yeah. They looked weird. And I was like, what's wrong with these 20? Like thinking they're counterfeit. They're, no, they were from 1939. So then at the end of the day, I just switched it out with the register. And I kept it in my wallet, and I was never going to spend it. Here's what I thought. I thought... No matter what in life, no matter how bad things get or how broke I get, I always have twenty dollars. Really? Yep. Where will that get you? Downtown. No. Well, eventually, I left my purse on a bus and it got stolen. So. <laughs> oh! But for a long time, it worked. Oh, I tasted it before I smelled it. I did everything all wrong. <laughs> so this one is Mokua. You are going to host hell. That's totally true. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Who would be there? Oh, my well, this gosh. Is, this one doesn't smell quite as much. So this is Mohua Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. So this is your difference between California oh, New and New Zealand. Zealand. So New Zealand, I'm going to get this statistic right. 75% of Sovi of the wine made... God dang it. I'm no, this is it flowing. Up. It's great. Most people say, I'm going to get the statistic wrong. They say, <laughs> you're like, I'm going to get the statistic right. 
So okay, Sauvignon Blanc consists of 75% of New Zealand's wine production and 80% of it, this part I don't need the cheat sheet for, comes from the Marlborough region. That's what it is. So do you know about the swirling thing? Do you see people doing this? Yes, but you're, I've seen it where they do it like this, down at the bottom. Down at the bottom. So be, and the other thing is, this is something I've learned. Tell is me. that um, the reason that it has a stem mm -hmm. is to keep it cold. Like so because your, hand your hands doesn't will affect. warm it up. Your yeah, yeah, yeah. Warm it up. This is really nice. This is actually, I was going to say, I it doesn't like smell as much. I, it's funny, I like the smells better on this one. They smell more, I guess, organic than less plasticky to me. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't smell that, that sort of, that I, other smell. I that, feel like I smell plants. The taste is very clean. What do you, okay, this one. You do that thing my mom does. I don't know why I did that. When I played Daryl, um, a lot of the stuff that I did was stuff Imitating that my your mom, mom. Oh my god! Because my mom does all kinds of crazy stuff like that, but it really worked for that character oh. being a little bit persnickety. But my mother would always do that. So I'm going to tell you the food we're going to have, and I'm going to ask you a question because I realize we're going to go on a tangent. Forever. So I'll get the food first. So the food that's supposed to go with this is a salmon avocado. I don't know what you call that part, but it's like avocado and Greek yogurt and it's mm. lemon. It's delicious and dill, and it's on a dill cracker. So have one, taste it, and then taste the wine after and see if that changes anything. And then whilst you're doing that, I'm going to ask you the question that you can answer when I'm eating. Mm. Um, mm. I know that you... Uh, mm. I, I think that you started out in improv. I did. I did improv um, in Chicago. Uh, all my heroes of when I was growing up were the cast of the original Saturday Night Live. So uh, Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, Gilda Radner, mm. all those guys. And I was like, what do they have in common? And what they had in common was Chicago. But actually what they had in common was Second City. Second City. And so improv. I was like, where is Second City? And Second City is in Chicago. I traveled the world after college. When I came back, I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to Chicago. And I went to go see Second City, and I was a little disappointed because those guys were so cutting edge. I was expecting it to be so, like, kind of gritty and whatever. And then it ended up being a little bit like the Carol Burnett show, which is awesome. I love yeah, the Carol Burnett show. True. But it was, like, cute. And it was, like, wigs and glasses and hats and whatever. And okay. I was like, it wasn't exactly what I, I expected. And then I found out that the guy that had taught all these guys and directed all these guys, his name was Del Close. And I remember he, that name. Yeah, and he was, uh, he was basically our improv guru, but he was at another place. And so it was the Improv Olympic, so I went over to the oh, Improv okay. Olympic and learned from them. The great part of the Improv Olympic is that you would take the classes and then be put on a team. Oh my God, and I used to be like... I would be so scared. I'm so glad you say that because improv is scary when oh you're Oh my God, it's terrifying. New. But the thing that's so great is that uh, you get this experience and then you bond with people mm -hmm. like you bond with nobody else because when nobody's laughing and it's not all going well, all you have is each other. And the people that are there for you when there's nobody laughing and it's terrible, you love them like nobody else. That's because, interesting. And then also the other thing is then you realize you're just trying to make each other laugh and then they are laughing and then you're like you're out of the hole and you're having a good time. But it takes a long time and it's one of those things that you just have to keep working on. Before you started improv, you already thought you were funny because you were doing bits. Well, just from, I was doing bits in uh, school. Yeah. Like, so like, so you know. like, I got the timing, I got the thing. Yeah, and I think, I think there's part of that. Well, my dad was very funny. It's so funny, like my brother saw him as a businessman, and so my brother pursued the, like, getting a law degree and getting all the things that my father had in that direction, and I was like, he's funny, and I went in that direction. Jerry Seinfeld or somebody mentioned this recently, and I was like, oh, that's really profound. It's one thing to be funny, it's another thing to be able to do it. I'm gonna pay you a compliment that I that I don't know where it will fall. When I first got the show, you were the person I knew from the show. You were the famous person on the show. Rachel was brand new, so she wasn't famous by any means yet. Donna Lynn was from Broadway and Gabrielle was Broadway in New York. I'm like, that's the guy I know. Well, You're how the do you famous know me? Person. I think because you've literally been in everything ever. I always tell uh, Danny, I'm like, I think Pete just says yes. I think you oh, just I do. say yes. Oh, I do. I'm an improviser. So, and, it's, and I think it's to, to, to jobs, to this kind of thing. And it's like, I think because you are, I know, there's got to be a better word than opportunist, but you're the guy that's like, you never know. The thing I would definitely uh, attribute it to is improvisation. Because improvisation trains you to say yes, and then not only say yes, because a lot of people think that that's the whole thing, is just, mm -hmm. oh, I just say yes, and it works. <laughs> but the thing is, is uh, to add to it. To know that I have a responsibility to you to take care of oh you. God. The philosophy of improvisation 
is so good for every kind of relationship building. The tenets of improv are all about saying yes, yes. are all about supporting the other player. The, it's also about making you look good and taking care I, of you. That's one of the things that I love about improv. I've always heard the yes and thing. Yes and you add to it. But it's that don't make yourself look good, make that guy look this good. This is going to go bad. He's also a, a very like compassionate person, doesn't want the wine to go to I don't waste. want to go bad. So, so right, I'm going to ask you right now, so far between New Zealand and California, preference? New Zealand. New Zealand. Okay. It's so funny because at first... And that California one was lovely. It was lovely, but at first I was thinking like, well, this doesn't have as much smell, flavor, what have you. And then... It's all in the That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. You're right. I'll be rude if I didn't give you some. Oh, well, look at that. A gentleman and a scholar. So we're moving on to our next wine, but I'm going to have our guest, Pete, introduce this wine. Oh my gosh. You, I'm very excited, actually, because I've never had a French Sauvignon Blanc. I've had California and I've had New Zealand, but I've never had a French Sauvignon Blanc from Le Mont, and it's Marie du... du what? Marine du Bard. Marine du Bard. En français, Marine du Bard. Marine du Bard. There it is. Uh, may I open it? You may open it. I don't know why I was so grabby right now. I, know. My, I was going to say something, but I didn't want to embarrass way. you in front of your fans. Yeah. You do, obviously, you do a lot of comedy. Mm -hmm. Have you done dramatic roles? I have, many times. I feel like you like comedy better, but what's the sweet I, spot? Uh, when I was, I don't know, I think like in my late 30s, uh, 40, something like that, I, I started to question, like, what am I doing? Like, mm -hmm. what, what am I wasting my time with here? And I started to realize that it definitely had value, but... The thing that I realized that was different here, let me Why, pour a little. It's not about being clever and it's not about fake acting. It's about really sharing yourself. If you're sharing who you really are, people will connect to that because it's truthful and it's real. If you're not really revealing yourself, you're not really doing it. When you came into Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, because you'd been a working actor for 20 years. Ish, 30. Uh, 30 years. But you had been a working actor for a long time. You have been in a lot of things episodically. But the great thing about getting that job was it was like, besides the singing and the dancing, just getting to do like a comedy show was a oh, joy. Yeah. Oh, it was a joy. And I was just like, I was living my dream. I was literally doing what I always wanted to do. And it was joyous. And also I got to do something that was a little out of my comfort zone, which was the whole uh, Daryl's becoming bisexual. I, I had never even thought about that. You know that. what was beautiful about that storyline too? It was not a question, it was not a controversy, it was just like a, all right, let's see where this takes me. But I loved it. And I the thing it. that I the thing that I really hooked into, he was becoming his genuine self. Yeah. And I feel like that's that is good for everybody. Everybody can tune into their genuine self and really be who they really are and not be who they are trying to pretend to be. I have a question for you. Well, first of all, let's let's talk about the wine real quick. It's a wine. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we should do this. So this is, yes, our, it is. this is our French Sauvignon Blanc, which is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, to be named a Sauvignon Blanc, you need to have a certain percentage, and I forget what it Ooh, is. That's really good. It smells like, hold on. I'm going to do the smell thing, because we haven't done that yet, really. A little dirt, a little wet dirt. A baby's diaper. Mm -hmm. Before. See, no, I don't smell. A I don't thing. smell a baby's diaper. With the first one, I smelled something. But what I was going to say a long time ago was that uh, roses, one person will smell a rose and oh. they'll be like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful rose. And somebody else will smell it and be like, nothing. I feel like that has a lot to do with our chemical makeup, too. Like, for instance, everyone in the world loves lavender. I, I, lavender gives me a headache. <laughs> and I feel so bad. And it's supposed to be soothing. And I'm like, oh, I feel so Babies bad. Babies are supposed to be nice. I find them it's gross. Kind of yeah. yeah. Can we put a little this okay, on this? Yes, now is time. So so goat cheese. And here was the hardest thing about pairing foods with these Sauvignon Blancs is every Sauvignon Blanc from any part of the world, they said goat cheese, goat cheese, goat cheese. And I'm like, well, I can't have three goat cheese. Oh my God, such a gentleman. Oh my God, this is so good. I've been looking at this cheese for an hour. Okay, let's do this. What, mm. did, you, what did you think of the mm. goat oh, cheese? Oh, I did. Amazing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Goat mm -hmm. cheese, good. Oh yeah. We're back. And we're back. So things might look a little different because we had to take a small break uh, because Pete had to go rescue a baby goat from a air conditioning uh, accident. Uh, air conditioning unit. It was really gross, but actually it worked out fine and yeah. he's fine now. Yeah, he's not bad. <laughs> Did we already do this wine? I don't think
did. We, we did. did. We okay, so we we did. You don't remember the last wine then because it's been a minute, sadly. We okay. took a break and I drank like three glasses. So of here's wine. what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do you a little spritzer of this as a reminder. Mm -hmm. So this is spritzer. Well, well, yeah. There you go. You take a quick sample because uh, I know you remember the first one because it was very smooth, and then the second one had more character. And this oh is no, this is a good one. Of the three, you had your California. That was that like sort of mild mannered, proper. You loved it in the beginning, and then you had this New Zealand, and you're like, wait, this one's got some zazoom. Mm -hmm. And then that was the French. And so I was just wondering if you knew. I feel like this is a ruse. He wants to test them all again. No, sneaky no, no. This is what Pete. I really want to we do. We call you Sneaky Pete. That's so what's that. This is New Zealand. Try that New one. New Zealand. Try that. Would Wouldn't it be so it. wrong if we just saw what they were like together? All right. Here's California. Hold on. Ah! Pete Gardner, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's perfect. I don't know how to ask the next question now. Do you like booze? I yes. was going to say, if you had to go home with one of these. <laughs> Honestly? Yeah. I think I like that French one. So that's what I'm sending you home with. Oh, really? So Susie has about a glass and a half left. <laughs> Luckily, Susie doesn't drink, so. Uh, I was going to ask you that, because I think she, I thought she didn't. But she Has does she not? never? No, she did when we first started dating. Oh my God, and it was glorious. We used to dance to Glenn Miller at bars, uh. and we had such a good time. But she would get so violently ill afterwards oh. that it was terrible. Uh, she was allergic. You know the nice thing though is that you guys have that relationship where you still can even if she doesn't. The other thing that's amazing, Susie has magical powers. And this is true. It's not the wine talking. <laughs> Susie can put one hand here and one hand here and remove my hangover. And it's the truth. And I maybe it's psychosomatic and I just believe Susie's a witch. She's like Glenda the Good Witch though. She's the Glenda the Good She's Witch. She's just... Here's the Susie. Here's the Susie. Again. Mm. It tastes and smells just like it did before. Even though there's there, three wines You're three wines. I think I just went for the one with the most wine left in it. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah look at that. That's a major score. Yeah. So that's... Oh, maybe that's the one I like. <laughs> so we did not do as much wine talking today as we usually do. So normally I would say... Did you, I'm a bad guest. <laughs> did you learn anything about wine today? But I don't see how that would be possible. <laughs> um... Yeah, I so, did learn that I love goat cheese and a little bit of a little fig, bit of fig jelly. I think I like this one the best. The French one? Yeah. Savvy B. So you really, really love this Sauvignon Blanc. I do. Um, it, did but you? Now you know why though, because it's so it tastes so light, it's so fresh. You can it's go on fruity. for hours. You can go on for hours. Mm -hmm. You just want a straw? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! I'm surprised that I even left some. <laughs> no, you can you absolutely finish it up. No, you can absolutely you want finish this? it up. This good jelly that is on yours. There. You are oh, such a consummate. You should that. host a thing. I really should. By the way, this is my little baby spoon. Oh, it's so cute. Remember back in the day, that's what they used to do. That's what they gave you. That's yours. Spoons and crap. Yeah. 1925. I look good for. Yeah, you do, girl. Almost a hundred. <laughs> Hanging in. <laughs> Let's compare the colors. Oh, right, right. This one's yellow and that one's yellow. Okay. All right, let's be serious. I don't know how at this point. I really don't. Okay, so usually we wrap it up. <laughs> we usually wrap it up. That's all I have. All right. <laughs> I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cat. So if you were to rate the wines. Oh, the wines. Is there uh, wine the today? The wines, yeah.